Hans in France. I, well, it makes me want to say Hans in France. Hans, Hans <laughs> in France, see? Um, he says, hi, Paul. First, I love your video, so thank you. You're certainly welcome, sir. My question is, is the difference in voltage in different parts of the world a problem for you and your fellow designers? Here in Europe, we have 230 volts coming out of the sockets, and I believe in the United States, you have 110 volts. Is this a challenge for you? And what can it mean for the signal? I hope you understand my question. Oh gosh, yes, that's, that's a great question, and one we've certainly been asked before, but one also worthy of repeating. So the short answer is no, it is not a challenge for us. And no, it doesn't really impact sound quality much, maybe a little. But overall, the answer is no. So let me explain to you how this kind of works. So you have 220 volts coming out of your sockets, and we have 120 volts coming out of our sockets. So there's a 100 volt difference, right? At the end of the day, this amplifier, or this power device, is going to use a very much lower voltage when we convert it to DC. So let's say in this amplifier, we want to have plus and minus 50 volts. That's a total of 100. And I need that plus and minus 50 volts to be here whether you plug it into 100 volts in Japan, 230 or 40 volts in Australia, 220 into Europe, or 120 in the United States. Whatever that voltage coming in, I need that exact voltage coming out. So how do we do that? Well. We use a transformer. Inside of our amplifiers are power transformers, and those power transformers have two coils. That's the primary, which is the incoming, and the secondary, which is the outgoing. The secondary sets the voltage for that plus and minus 15 that I need. And as long as whatever it's being fed and magnetically coupled to the incoming AC, life's good. So on the primary side, the input side, which plugs into the wall, there, is, there are several windings. So if we think about a, a coil, and, and each winding goes to a different voltage. So when you order one of these, we have to know where it's going. So if it's going to Europe, we take the windings that match your country, and we set it up inside of here so that when you plug it in, it's going to work perfectly. If you were to then take that amplifier and go to Japan, we'd have to open this up and rewire it to work in Japan. But it's the same transformer, the same parts, all of that works the same. It's just different wiring, different taps, we call them, on the primary of the transformer that has more windings, or fewer windings. So for higher voltages, we would want fewer windings, right? And so for lower voltages, we're going to want more windings. Or do I have that backwards? No, that's correct. Um, so it's a simple matter of calculating how many windings, how many turns we want on each of those taps. And then we connect it up to the proper tap and life is good and it should be the same. The only thing that causes us any grief at all are the hertz. So everywhere in the world, pretty much, there's a couple of outliers around that uh, still use 60 hertz. But in the United States, we use 60 hertz. So AC, remember, is an up and down sine wave. And in the United States, it comes to us at 60 times a second. And the reason it does that is because of Nikola Tesla, who had a thing about threes. Everything had to happen in threes. So the Europeans, the, the Asians, uh, everywhere else around the world, they, they had a standard that they try to do, which is 50 hertz. And Tesla, this is early on, didn't want anything to do with that because 50 is not divisible by three. And that drove him nuts. And of course, we all know he was quite OCD. 
But that's what we wound up with. And so that becomes a little bit more problematic because the higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer and the more efficient it is. And that's one of the reasons also that he, I'm sure he justified it. Like if we could have had 90 hertz or 100 hertz, it would have been even better. But such as it is. In Europe and in everywhere else in the world, we have to have bigger transformers to handle that lower frequency. So what we as manufacturers do is every one we put in is big, and then it works just fine at the higher frequencies in the United States. But it's a bit of a, a pain in the keister. <laughs> All right, thanks for the question. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.